Hey everyone, I'm Allison. I'm Bryce. And, and we're, we're Better Half Reviews. Reviews. And today we're talking about Petrichor, the Collector's Edition. This is by David Cherkop, and it's uh, by Mighty Board Games. And it, the art is by Daniela Attard. So Petrichor is the pleasant earthly smell after rain. Best and smell ever. There is plenty of rain in this game because you control little clouds. And you put your raindrops in the clouds and then you make your rain fall over different crops to make them grow. And you score points and whoever has the most points wins. Alright, so let's talk about how I feel about this game. Um, the theme. <laughs> I love this theme so much. When I first heard about this a couple years ago, I was like, oh my gosh, you could be clouds? I need a game about clouds. Um, so yeah, it took a while to get it. We finally backed it, the Kickstarter. This is all in, everything. <laughs> there's like three official expansions and then a whole bunch of mini things. Anyway, there's lots of different themes. Like you have cows and bees and crazy weather. Crazy weather, you have all sorts of different crops. Mm -hmm. and, and you have methane. <laughs> yes, well yeah, the cows bring the methane. But something I like about with the theme of it, they give you the scientific name of all the different crops on the mm -hmm. tiles. I can't remember any of them off the top of my head because it's like <laughs> Petrificus totalis. That's what I thought of anyway. But um, <laughs> I like that the theme ties in with what you're doing where like you use wind cards to move the clouds along and if you um, add more rain to it, enough rain gets into the cloud, it becomes a thundercloud and it can rain out. Like it's, it's just very thematic to me. And I'm like, look at this little rain cloud. <laughs> yeah, it is thematic. Um, as much as I try to just think about the gameplay, it is it is pretty thematic. Um, I really like the weather events at the end of the round, mm. where you can, you know, make clouds thunder clouds or add more rain to a cloud or move raindrops around on the ground. And or stuff. in reverse turn order do things. Like, it can make decisions very intriguing. Yes. Especially if you start thinking about, okay, what weather events are going to happen? Do I want to go out first so I could have, yes, you know, a certain turn order for those weather events? I don't know. So then maybe Very we should talk about the mechanics a little bit. Um, because in the game, you're, you can, if you want to, draft cards at the beginning and then everybody's playing cards to manipulate clouds and make things rain. But when you are finishing your turn, you can choose to either vote on one of the weather events that you could have happen at the end of the round. Or you can choose to just try to get some straight up points. Which brings you closer to harvesting your crops. And harvesting is when you can actually score points. And you don't harvest after every round, you only harvest under a certain condition. Which is very interesting because lots of games you're like, oh, you score at the end of the round, you just do your thing. It's like, oh, we're not scoring this round or next round. Ooh, this could get really interesting. but. I really like that like you have area control with the raindrops and then you have um, the voting which can change what events are going to happen mm -hmm. and the players can kind of control if they want things to score. It, there's just like so many different layers of it that it just, I like that it all works together really well. Something else I like about this game that has technically nothing to do about the actual gameplay is the game trays in this. Um, it was done very well, like almost perfectly in my opinion, <laughs> um, because you have like, I'm just gonna, just gonna, just gonna show you. Cause you have your little double sided board and you can play, oh yeah, that's something else I didn't have about. You can play a shorter game mm -hmm. with four rounds or a longer game with six rounds. If you have lots of expansions mixed in, the shorter game's probably better. Or if you don't have a ton of time, like we don't, we usually play a shorter game and it's kind of nice to just bloop, play it. Um, the players, all of their things are like in a tiny little raindrop. And that is just so cool to me. I'm like, you got raindrops, so like even the game trays are thematic, okay? Well, and then you have a nice place for everything, and everything's sorted. It's gonna be super. And then, you got the clouds inside here. I'm gonna show you what some of the clouds look like. Like, you got this cute little cloud, and then you can put raindrops in it, and little lightning bolts. But anyway, 
there's tons of pieces in this game. So yeah, I have all these little like cardboard chits for the expansions. And the thunders go on the side of this. It just, everything looks so cool. What I like is... Ooh, runaway tile. Each, like here's the base game tiles, but then each of the different kind of expansions or variations has like a spot in the game box. Mm -hmm. and, and there's little like cubby holes underneath like where yeah. you can put your cards. I don't know if they can see that from down there. Yeah, there's like... Under this expansion, there's some like bees and stuff that go along with it, and different cards that go along with it. I don't know. I think it, the game trays with them mm -hmm. really well. And that's not the only thing with the components that's done well. Here, hold this. So this is the collector's edition. It's putting all the main expansions together, the mini expansions, promo tiles, special tiles, solo experience. That's a lot to put into like just one thing. And the rule book, they really thought about it. So this is something I haven't really seen other people do. Um, so they color coded all the different expansions, boop, 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 and then gave the, like, what's in this expansion? It's all color coded. And then when you go through the rules of the game, um, that was probably a better picture show. Um, when you go through the rules of the game, it has the writing color coded for like here's your regular rules and then if you're adding this expansion it'll have a little blurb with that color and it is so nice to just have the flow of the game in one rule book and not have to like go back and forth and back and forth to different ones right and or, it's or like read like the first part of the rule book okay okay yeah. got the base game flip back now let's flip to the end of the rule book and see how this expansion changes the base game well you do with that a little bit but with something else. But yeah, so like, I like that when we were learning the first game, I was like, I ignored everything that was just highlighted. Or it's like, oh, we were adding in the bees, so we look at the stuff that has like a yellow highlight. It was so awesome, like super well done. Um, there was like one or two typos, but that's okay. Um, and then at the back, they have all the information about each of the tiles and the player count number that you need in order to use that because there are player specific player count specific tiles, something just to be aware of, depending on how many people are playing. But the color coded theme still stays with this. So mm -hmm. you have like the blue, which is kind of, that's this expansion, but then you have like the yellow and how the yellow expansion interacts with this expansion. Yeah. Because and that's something else that's really nice about this game is you can mix and match basically all of it together. So mm -hmm. like if you want to play with bees and cows, you can do that. Um, but yeah, so everything is really well done. The thing that I'm taking it off on for not being perfect game trays slash box is the box needs to be just a smidge taller. And the cow board, you have to like wedge it in on the side, which makes these trays be a little bit tight on the side. Other than that, it's like super awesome. And this rule book is so cool. Very well done. Okay, I'm gonna stop gushing now. Maybe. How'd you make that stand? Okay, so you know, it's pretty. You got that, right? Okay, great. Uh, what about any cons? For me, the base game alone is just a little underwhelming. I don't know. It's just too basic. Maybe because we only played the base game at four rounds instead of six rounds. just felt too quick. I, I, just, I was like, yeah, it's a yeah. good game, but it's nothing special. Yeah, the too quick part, I would say that's all on us for playing the short game most of the time. Have we played the long game? Maybe once? We haven't played the long okay. game. But we've played at multiple player counts. Well, we haven't played one player, or at least I haven't. I haven't yet, yeah, no. Um, but we played at two, three, and five players, or four players. Mm -hmm. um, and I feel, I feel like it scales well. Um, I don't feel like the gameplay is really that much different at two versus four. But I still just, I think the base game is just a little eh, basic and not as fun for me. I enjoyed the base game. I thought it was fine. Um, but I do like having all these options available um, to just mix and match. So, you know, it's like if I just want to play something quick or if I just want to teach the game to someone, I'll just do the base game. Although you could probably mix in an expansion teaching someone new. But, but I, I, I do like that there's lots of different options. So I haven't gotten tired of the base game, but I do like adding in like some special tiles and not just all plain tiles, which... Um, a con for me, do I have one? Not winning. 
<laughs> I'm just kidding. Um, I don't know if I have a con, really. Um, okay, so the regular rules, you just deal out cards and then that's what you do. You use those cards to play. If you get dealt a bad hand, that can mm. be terrible. Like, And if you have a bad round, that could be bad for the whole game. But... But... <laughs> but in the rule book. No, to no, that okay. point, if you have a bad hand, you just pass early. I guess so. And you Yeah, and you then you screw every... up everybody's game. Exactly. Dirty. You screw everybody else up. Cuz if you so... if you pass, everybody gets like one more turn and then it has to move on to the next round. That's okay, yeah. Okay, that's a good point. So if you get a bad hand, there's no point in making the round drag on. Yeah. You just pass and well, you can't pass your first turn. Yeah, you have to so go. So you, you play at least one card, and then the next time you pass, mm -hmm. and you make everybody else go, oh, crap, I had this perfect idea, and now I only have, can do one more thing. Yeah. Okay, so then, but the thing that I was talking about with getting a bad hand, uh, in the back of the rule book, they have drafting rules, which I I personally like better as a board game -er. Um, being able to draft my cards, and it feels like you have a little bit more of like a control and strategy to what's going to be happening um, so I highly recommend if you don't want it to feel so luck based with what cards you get, do the drafting because that'll improve it. That's like my only possible semi-negative that you can already fix at the back of the rule book. So, <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, I don't know. I really like that. Or oh, do you have something else to say? I was going to say, I really did underappreciate the power of passing until, oh, until that game, last game that we played right before the we played it yesterday. It was so bad. But it was, like, I've always felt like, oh, man, I have to, like, maximize all my cards and, yeah. like, do everything. And then I was like, wait, I play one card, and then I can do the optional two-card action. And that's really all I can do this round. So maybe I'll just pass. And once somebody passes, you can't do, like, other people can't do two actions on a turn. They can only do the one main action. So I got to play three cards, and they're still s sitting there holding like seven cards, or possibly it, more than seven because they can roll over. Your from timing round to round. was so bad because that game was so different because we didn't score until like the very end, right? Yeah, the harvest never happened until the yeah. end. Yeah. <laughs> so he, I'm like, okay, I've got plans. I'm gonna do this and try to get some rain down on this tile so I can get some scores. And he's like, pass. And I'm like, we just started this round. And it threw everything off. And then you won in a tiebreaker, and I lost by two, and you and Carrie stole points from me, so I totally lost. The power of passing. It's rude. And the power of moving someone else's raindrop off a cloud um, to make them lose points. Off a cloud? Whatever. Off a, of a tile. tile. You know, things and stuff. <laughs> um, this game has... This game has some take that in it. So be aware. Um, but I, I feel like it's overall pretty good. But there's sometimes where I, I do want to flip the table. Like when he passed. Um, but it's, it's intriguing. And you don't always know who is going to win. There's been lots of games where it's like, you've said like, oh, you're totally going to blow me out of the water. I'm like, oh, I'm never even going to catch up to you. And it ends up being really close each time, most of the time. And then, <laughs> like, even, like, there's one time where I was like, there's no way I'm going to win. And I ended up winning. I'm like, oh, okay. I like this. <laughs> well, and there was also one time where I'm like, oh, man, I just totally screwed up that round. I And you had scored a ton of points that round or something. And I was, and I was like, don't like, worry, I'll mess it up. There's no way I'm going to come back and win this he game. He won. And then I won by, like, 10 or 15 points. <laughs> yeah, it was bad. It was bad. I also just make stupid decisions. But anyway. So... There's your pros and cons. Um, I like it a lot. This was one of my most anticipated games that was coming out. That was like two years ago, almost like a year and a half ago when we filmed it. <laughs> I didn't know I would like it this much, but I, I've enjoyed every play that I've done. And I'm like, I need to try some more variants. And we didn't really talk about the expansions too much, but. No, but I do think playing this game with the expansions is a must. The base game for me is, eh, it's all right. But with the expansions, it really does um, bring in a lot more choice, a lot more strategy. strategy. Um, and I think, at least with what we've played so far, we haven't played all the expansions, and we haven't combined them all together or anything. 
Yeah, we but, played most things separate. I, some things we've mixed in were like promo tiles or special tiles. Right. But um, what we've played seems pretty balanced. Again, we haven't like mixed everything together, but yeah. at least for what we've tried so far, it seems really balanced. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And the, I feel like the expansions kind of vary in difficulty, like flowers, it's like basically just tiles to throw in. <laughs> and then the honeybee adds a little bit more and then the cows seem a little bit more complicated. Yeah, so I, I love that there's options for everybody. Mm -hmm. Pretty much, I love this game. Bryce likes it a lot. I love it. So that's what we think about this game. We do also do a lot of stuff over on Instagram, so be sure to follow us there. And I'm Bryce. I'm Allison. And we're Better Half Reviews. Happy gaming. Have fun. Make it rain. Take this away from me. <laughs> well, you can move it along. Sorry, I didn't know you were going to actually speak. Okay, go. It's just so cool, okay? Anyway. <laughs>